What's up guys, this is Val Cameron from Dreamlight. So how do you achieve that cool Mad Max look? Well I found by you know creating over 70 hours of, of IRA um, video tutorials, I found that one of the easiest ways to use this amazing render engine is to actually use pre-made HDRI um, probes, right? Of course, I've got an, you know my own tweak on that by you know using spotlights in conjunction with that. But more on that later. So what you do simply is use one of the pre here from Dimension Three, uh, Dimension Theory, and just load one to our scene. We cannot see it right here in preview window. So next, I'm gonna add the car by the amazing DS Fire. So I go here, load the car mad and just load it I just love this car pretty amazing um, this is a poser version I'm loading here so I'm just gonna add some textures to it quickly uh, there we go I'm gonna use the road warrior map on it okay so pretty much we're gonna go to texture shady preview and what I'm gonna do is back the camera a little bit so I get a nice view here on the car all right once this is completed uh, i'll just make sure that th this camera doesn't have any lighting on it because there's a new feature in the studio 4.8 called headlamp so i'm going to turn it off it's turned off right now which is good but just before rendering i'm going to add a little bit of d wave effect i'm going to click on the camera uh, sub sub uh, menu here and click on depth of field yes then I'll switch to top view and wire frame so I can see the lines in here and what I'm gonna do is pick the front of the car as focal point so I'm gonna adjust the focal distance there's a red line in here that line I'm gonna put on the front bumper of the car so that that particular area is gonna be sharp right Next, I'm gonna go back to the camera and simply do a render. Obviously, I'm gonna just pause the video and see you in a few seconds. So the good thing about using HDRI probes is that they render really quickly. We maybe can have a little bit stronger DOF uh, effect on the uh, you know camera. So I'm just gonna cancel that, close it, and lower the f-stop value. By lowering that a little bit, maybe going to 22, uh, we're gonna increase the softness effect. So if you lower the value, it's gonna be increased, and vice versa. If you increase the value, you're gonna have less blurry for and background. All right. The problem is obviously these backgrounds are not really physically touching the car; they are really f you know, far away. But iRay is simply emulating the ground and as you can see the texture is a little bit out of focus here because of that the car is also out of focus here on the back but it's in the focus here at the front I'm not gonna worry about that right now I'm gonna simply you know, head into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you a trick how to actually sharpen this ground effect and add some more Mad Max uh, <laughs> looking field so see you there cancel save last render I'll simply call it car and save as BMP and next I'm open up Photoshop and you know I always say that there is no one way of doing everything in 3D art there's always you know one way has always its pros and cons uh, obviously using these HDRI you know images they surround your scene and they fake the ground but they are not really touching the ground they are far far away but what we can do here um, is simply mask out the ground a little bit uh, all right I'm gonna make a copy control C and V copy that and simply add a fake unsharp, unsharp mask to it to sharpen that ground effect um, what you also can do is add a little bit of noise to that so 
can go ahead and click on noise. We can also add that noise as a separate layer. Uh, but I'm just going to add a little bit of noise in there because that noise tells you know our eyes that uh, there is a little bit of sharpness in there. There are obviously other ways uh, you can do this, um, but this is the quickest way to to get that um, sharper ground. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two layers together. And I'm gonna first change the color scale. So I'm gonna go. There are two ways of doing that. One is adjusting the curves. Simply go and lower the blue and lower the green to half of that. So you get a nice orangish color scale. Another thing you can do to get a more Mad Max look and feel, obviously, maybe without the water, right? But is to actually, you know, create a new layer and add an orange overlay on top of that. Just feel it. With a paint bucket and then use overlay here that you know colors it quite a bit right but you can just adjust this down the bit so you got a nice you know color scale going on really cool on top of that what you can do um, is that when you once you have this pretty much done uh, flatten the image you can just duplicate it and use screen on the copy that just washes things out which is just an awesome way of you know adding a little bit of contrast because you kind of preserve the darkness in the image the black levels but just wash out everything else and I particularly love the washed out effect um, so having that created I'm gonna just do a final thing when I use black and white and I'm gonna use filter and use render clouds okay once this is done I'm gonna create a mask to it click on the mask and I'm gonna use a gradient just use shift to hold the keyboard somewhere around here and just fade away or maybe just something like that okay now I'm gonna change the color and click back on the main layer change the color of it uh, do the same thing adjust blue to half and green to have all that. So we got a nice orangish color scale. And once this is done, I'm gonna click on the screen. So I blend it. As you can see now, you can also adjust it, you know, up and down. But this is just an awesome way of adding that extra uh, Mad Max, you know, look and feel because it's kind of uh, windy and blowing the desert sand and all that. And once, once you know your, by the way, there are other, other ways you can play with the, uh, you know, uh, fog or dust. You can use overlay, you can use soft light, you can use hard light. That would just change, and you play with different, you know, effects. You can also copy the entire thing, duplicate it, and use one screen, and one uh, as the uh, hard light. You can also go here and rotate the camera so flip them horizontally sorry about that not the entire thing here we go transform flip horizontally so you can flip the, the fog and have one layer you know play this effect and the other layer play this effect and you can just adjust them accordingly and just you know add how much of this do you want how much of this do you want all right. Finally, when you're done, um, you simply flatten the image, and I would just do a reduction of color scale, just you know, adjust here on the saturation, um, and that's pretty much it. We can maybe sharpen up the entire image, and that's it, guys. That's the cool Mad Max look. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and got a few ideas on how to use um, iRay in Photoshop uh, together. So, see the link below for the car, I see the link below for the, um, the lights, and also I've got a special uh, video tutorial program uh, called iRay Professional uh, Lighting inside the iStudio that covers um, pretty much my own approach. Like I said, I've been doing over 70 hours of, of 
you know, iRay does your tutorials. So I found the best and easiest way to use it quickly and easily. And you can just, you know, click on the link below, check it out. Um, it's really awesome. It's easy to use and will give you immediate professional results. Without the fuss, so guys, uh, thank you for watching. Enjoy your Sunday and see you, see you soon again.